journey today has taken me to the little village of Kilku in County Down, home of the All-Ireland Senior Club Football Champions. Joining me now is Jerome Johnston, a hero in Kilku and indeed all around Down. And whenever Gaelic football and great scores are mentioned, the one scored by Jerome Johnston, which won the title for Kilku, All Ireland champions against Kilmacud in the final. I have to ask you, what was the feeling like when you saw the ball hit the back of the net, Jerome? Uh, look, it's probably hard to explain. It was a very surreal feeling when it happened. Um, like if it was a liquid and I could put it into a bottle, I would drink it every day. Um, <laughs> it was uh, spine tingling stuff. Um, and just to turn around and see uh, the crowd and the Kilku people and the emotion in their face and stuff, uh, especially a game that for, for uh, 80 minutes of it looked like it, it, it you know, just wasn't going to be. You suddenly realised you were over the line. The goal came so late. Uh, it did. Uh, and like, if it's, probably if somebody said, hey, what way would you like to win uh, the club's first ever All-Ireland? Uh, it probably was a nice way to win it, you know, for the story and stuff after, but for a player, it, uh, it was, uh, it felt relief, um, to be honest, because a couple of years before, obviously, Cora Finn, and we put a lot of effort in, and that day we were going in underdogs, and we were just trying to put a performance together, whereas this time we were probably going in, and a lot of people had tipped us, and, we just didn't perform, uh, but thankfully at the end, as I said, it was just that relief that, listen, we've got over the line. And I suppose what embellished that goal, if anything could, was the fact that your two brothers were involved in the build-up as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Talk to um, me about that, when you saw the move evolving. Yeah, I think it was Oren Brannigan actually, he won the turnover uh, from the Kilmacud keeper and uh, he kicked it straight to Shilin, Um and he says, Chad and Orange since he says he couldn't have been kicking it to a better man because he was the fastest man on the team. And would go direct for goal. And would go direct for goal. Uh, so he got it to Shailen and as soon as I had seen the turnover and he got to Shailen, uh, my legs were gone. But I just, I, I just said I'll make my way to the nets because I knew that's where he was going with it. And Ryan as well, he had the same mindset in his head that Shailen's going that way, head that way. And thankfully Shailen um, picked Ryan out. Uh, with a great pass on, on his weaker side uh, and I think Ryan couldn't believe it that he got him and you, you know the, the Kilmacud defender made a great clearance off the line and just as I seen the ball coming to me I couldn't believe my eyes um, and thankfully it went into the back of the net. Joy unconfined at the end of the game, how would you appraise the team's performance overall in the final? Probably in terms of uh, our execution and performance that day, it was probably well below par. Uh, looking back on it, with a lot of misses, we were, you know, late on missing tackles, uh, you know, letting them through very easy, which was something that we weren't doing. We were very strong at the back uh, as a team before that, but that day would seem to just be maybe, and it could have been maybe just the occasion or complacency in that because there was a lot to it. Um, that it kicked in. We hadn't played well, but the thing that we did do for those whole 80, 80 minutes was stay in the game. Uh, and even when a lot of things had went against, like I think with a lot of wides that day, um, that we didn't let those, those things affect us. Uh, and as I said, we hung in there. Um, it was more like a boxing match. We hung in there right to the end, and finally we landed the killer. And I suppose all the years playing together, the mindset was there to persevere to the very end. You heard that from the time you were a little wee boy. Yeah, well, as you say, normally what they say is uh, it's not over until the big lady sings. And uh, that's something that's been embedded in the club. Like, just keep going. And even if it's not going well, just give it everything you have right to the end. And, you know, if you can come off and say, look, we'll try to the end, that's the main thing um, over everything else. And, and you'll see as the young lads down there the day, they'll just keep trying and even if it even if they're not winning, as long as they're trying, well, you know, you can't ask for any more than that. The very nature of sport have to be winners and losers. Did you get a chance to talk to Kilmacud, a fantastic team, some of the players afterwards? We didn't actually uh, and we would have loved to have um, but we stayed on the field for quite a long time know. and you know we have to be thankful for Crow Park for allowing us to do that. Um, I think because of um, the loss, especially in the previous final and that, and 
we like you know we congratulated Cora Fennin and come off the, you know we're very sad in the change rooms and that after that we just wanted to soak up the moment because it, never, it might never happen again and to be fair to Kelly McCudd their manager was lovely uh, and a lot of us uh, have taken a lot of inspiration for him to come into the changing room in, in them circumstances and speak the way he did uh, with a smile on his face uh, says a lot about the man and we saw all the celebrations in Crow Park tell me this what was it like when you came in and saw the sign for Kilku? Back home, the sense of identity, community, belonging, everything encapsulated here in the little village at the foot of the Moorn Mountains. It's probably hard to sum it up. Um, the, you know, there was a range of emotions going through uh, us as players. Like, thankfully, now we've did it, we've done it, like we've completed it. Um, and then for those people, you know, you have people ranging there from maybe 90 years of age. You've seen Kilcoo in the very hard times of Division 3, Division 4. Uh, and for them, people in the emotion in their face. And a lot of people in the club that have given so much. Uh, and, and, you know, their thoughts were when they were given that, that they wanted just to make Kilcoo competitive. Uh, and then once they got to that stage, it was to make Kilcoo, you know, let's win, let's be, you know, let's be the best and down. Let's, you know, be competitive in Ulster. And, now I think the thing is that anywhere you go in Ireland and you mention that you're from Kilcoo, straight away they know where it is and uh, that's a very proud thing for us um, and even as a whole, even for down in that, it, it was a massive uh, thing. And coming home then as All-Ireland Champions, the celebrations lasted a few days I'd say. It did, it did, it went still on. Still going on perhaps. Prob probably still is going on, yeah. Um, but look, it was brilliant and as I said, it was for the whole community and to see kids, the inspiration that the young kids are going to get and then the satisfaction that the older people will get uh, and the, the sense of achievement. I think everybody got something out of it and to see everyone with a smile, whether tears of joy or just a big, big grin on their faces, that was a very special moment and for everybody to be looking each other in the eye and saying, this is for us, this is for everyone here. Who were your own heroes growing up around Kilku? Would they be down players or were they local heroes? I know there would be both, like, um, you know, watching down, you would have had, there's a lot of great players there whenever we were growing up. Probably, um, you know, obviously, uh, James McCart and Mickey Linton, those boys, uh, when you look back, they were unbelievable what they could do. Um, and then, Obviously, as down went on, then you had some of the more recent lads that were brilliant as well. And then with Kilcoo, the club boys would probably were your biggest idols because you were able to come over and watch them at training and they would yeah. talk to you and you know different things. I remember when we were young, and saying, "And can you play with it? Can you can you do it with your right foot?" <laughs> oh well, let's see you do that. And they would have taken the time before training, you know, to play back and forward with you before their own training commenced and. We, now I would like to give that back to the younger lads, what they did for us, you know what I mean? And then watching those boys on a Friday night and the, the effort that they put in, whether they were winning or losing. Club is family, never more evident than here in Kilku. Three of your own family, three Johnston brothers, three of you, and then five Brannigan brothers. Yeah. Are they the shepherds? They're the shepherds, yeah, yeah. Um, um, oh, listen, like it's great that you know, to have your relatives and playing with them and your brothers and stuff as well because you start off the very first ball you kick. Me and Ryan are Irish twins, so that was the first person I ever kicked a ball with. It's the first person that you're um, even playing against. Not only is he your first uh, teammate, he's also your first rival because you're playing against him in the garden and things like that. But to, for everything that we had put in, that those boys had put in, that everyone had put in to, you know, for it to come together on that day, it's, it is a special feeling. You'll never be forgotten. Goal scorer in the All-Ireland final. You'll carry that with you forevermore. Hopefully, um, that would be nice. It would, um, to be remembered for that. And look, listen, I'm still young and hopefully uh, there's a lot of other big days ahead for Kilcoo.